It's green for go. They're racing. He says go. He says Tara. And Tiger Tara rolls away from them on the home turn. Here comes another big boil over. Equine Athletics is about its best. The King is in the castle once more. This is in one race. The rest are almost in another post. She is a star with a capital S. It's going to be a triple treat. A miracle three-peat. Ladies and gentlemen, you have witnessed history here at Menangle. What about that? It's getting right up on the sprint lane and it's going to bolt in. Hello and welcome to the very first edition of the Menangle Angle. My name's Jessica Watkins and I'm joined by our General Manager for Racing Operations here at Club Menangle, David Watson. Well, Wano, we're starting a new show here called the Menangle Angle. It's a bit of an uplifted Club Menangle preview, if you like, where not only will we, will we be providing a video preview, but it'll also be going as an audio version onto all podcast fl- platforms. So wherever viewers or listeners get their podcasts from, they'll be able to hear us talking all about the action coming up from an angles on Saturday night. Yeah, I feel very groovy. I feel like one of those elite sports people before a big football game or soccer game, they're walking around the dressing shed with their headphones on. But no, an interesting way to do it. I'm sure, Jess, as always, you'll run it professionally and keep me in line. (laughs) Well, I hope so, and I hope we manage to find plenty of winners. But we've chosen to start the Menangle Angle this week because, of course, there is a stellar 10 race card coming up here on Saturday night with Four Group 1s, the New South Wales Breeders' Challenge finals for the two-year-old and three-year-old. We also have the Group 3 finals for the four-year-old division as well. And Great races. Well, guess who's here in the Battle of Bathsheba free-for-all? We get to see Leap to Fame. He's going to be here at Club Menangle. How exciting is that for the club, Wano? Yeah, amazing. Amazing result to have him here. I know he's had a little bit of a setback and it's plan B for his um, tr- ideas to, about going to New Zealand for the New Zealand Cup, but... Now a twenty-five thousand dollar race, and we've got you know, arguably the world's best horse here, Leap to Fame, which just only adds to what's a great night's racing. It's a real horse enthusiast meeting this one, so yeah, it should be lots of eyes on screens, and hopefully a lot of people having a bet and following their favourite horses. Race one on Saturday night's card gets underway at six twenty-seven p.m., and it is an event for the Harness Racing New South Wales Rising Stars. There's been ten invited drivers invited to compete in the twenty thousand dollar penalty free event here in Wano. It is a star-studded lineup that will race here in race one. Yeah, really nice. There's a bit of irony actually in the race name. It's Happy 90th Birthday, Norman McNally. So hopefully one of the family members is seeing that because it's about the rising stars. Yeah, a, a great lineup of our up-and-coming superstars in this event. Um, I'm sure it'll be keenly contested, but uh, no one will be wanting for ability in the race, any of the trainers and the connections, because they're all top-class young drivers. That's for sure. And when looking at the field, well, Craftsman's Charlie, he's coming out of racing a lot stronger op- opposition than what he meets here. And he's come up with the pole position and Ashley DeLose is set to take the reins here. So you'd have to think he's a leading fancy. Absolutely. Craftsman Charlie, as you mentioned, raced in all those lead-up events going into the Eureka. Ashley drove in the Eureka, so that's only going to be a benefit for her um, Jet Turnbull on Whiskey Cavalier, another good chance from the Jason Grimson barn. Went oh so close to his initial Menangle winner here the last week. But yeah, oh, there's, there's a lot. There's horses going around. Colonia Courage has won two of its last five here on the Saturday nights. It's got the services of Jack Brown. He's no stranger to winning races here. You know, Grace Pinella dominates in the Hunter Valley. James Locke, I don't think there's a young driver that does more Ks than James Locke. He's everywhere in New South Wales on a nice horse and Romany for Mark Lafay. So, yeah, really good race, really good a uh, lot of young drivers in this race. So, be keen, keenly contested, but, yeah, I do like your selections a little bit there. I think Craftsman Charlie from Barrier 1 would be hard to beat with Whiskey Cavalier in a very good chance as well. Race two on the card is an event that always takes pride of place on the Clubman Angle Racing calendar, and that is the Kari JC Cap and Plate. We see a really strong list of drivers set to compete here after they accumulated points throughout the racing season to earn their position in this event. Yeah, done a little bit differently this year. So it was over the last, or since uh, the start of the season, 2024, they got a point for a win, five point, uh, sorry, five points for a win, three points for a second, two for a third. Really, really good that we've got a couple of Victorians up this year. They put their hands up, wanted to be involved. That's the young uh, Rory Coverdale. Uh, she's driving. She was, I think, the second leading point scorer in the series. Uh, Scott Raines has been here before, really interested to compete in this race. So it's great to see that. But what's good about this, these drivers are going around all the time 
So occasionally when we've had these races, some of the drivers only maybe have one or two drives a year. These drivers are going around week in, week out, so it's good to see... Um, difference to this year this race initially started as a thousand meter race when we started this maybe 10 11 years ago it went to a mile this is the first year it's been conducted over 2300 so there's a little bit of tactics there as well but best thing too we've got all metro horses in this race so they know how to get around the track and um yeah the 2300 meters will make it interesting i think a horse that lines up here that caught my eye in his trial was number 11 obadiah dragon for joe conley He's first up from New Zealand in this event. Tanner Brown is looking for his maiden driving victory and he's landed the drive on this horse, but his trial here at Club Menangle was very, very impressive about 12 days ago. And a good thing with Tanner Brown too, he had a lot of points, but hasn't had that victory yet. Drove a lot, of, lot, a lot of places. What, what a great race to you know, break your maiden in that one. Look, I also like Wave the Bill. It's got last year's winner, Leighton Green, driving, Leighton... Once again, no stranger to driving a lot of winners here at Menangle. Uh, trained by Kerry and Morris on the track. The horse has got good form here. So I think, and it's got good gate speed. So, but the 2300, we'll sort a few of them out. But I do like number five a little bit. Wave the bill. The first of our group ones on the card is a race three. And that's the New South Wales Breeders' Challenge two-year-old Colts and Geldings final. And we have seen an absolute stellar lineup here of quality boys set to go around. And the semi-finals threw up a bit of... There weren't all odds on favourites that won here, especially with Jungle Dragon, who I think was about the $21 mark. But the barrier draw has opened this event right up. Oh, look, I, you mark the so – sometimes when you mark the form, you might mark two or three. I've got eight mark that could possibly win this race and it wouldn't be a surprise. That's how good it is. Um, it's put in a t prime spot. Like, I expect a lot of interest um, from the betting public and this as well. I think people will see value – because it's such an open field. Once again, really hard to go past your semi-final winners, Jungle Dragon, and um, he's a treacherous, has been four in a row. But there's some big raps on any of these. Number one, Fatal Weights. Three, Path to Greatness. Four, he's a Malteser, was a fantastic second here. Double Lou from the Riverina. He's got the services of Will Rickson. Like it's just you just go through the whole list. And you know, I'm not even mentioning my ultimate Barney. He's drawn out a little bit wide, but yeah. If he had a drawn a bit better, he could have even been favourite for the race. There's something, he might start at 10 or 12 to 1. People might see value in it. Honestly, eight, it could be eight different winners and not one of them would surprise you, but really hard to go past winning form. So leading to a little bit to he's a treacherous. We actually caught up with Robbie Morris the other day in Benji as he's a treacherous is known around the stables and that's on the Clubman Angle social media there. So I encourage anyone Benji. to go and have a look. Benji is his stable name and... He's quite a cool, relaxed customer and he's got an absolutely beautiful face on him. So Is that Robbie or the horse? <laughs> That's definitely oh, the, the horse, horse. I'm okay, talking sorry. about. <laughs> Race four is the second of our group ones on the card and that's the New South Wales Breeders' Challenge three-year-old Colts and Geldings final. And much like with the two-year-old boys division, we see another wide open event here. But Wardan Buddy, he's come up with barrier two for Emma Stewart and Cameron Hart. We mentioned last week just how, how dominant that combination is when they link up. And I think again here, he looks like he's going to be very hard to beat. I think we also mentioned it was interesting that they bypassed the Victoria Derby to concentrate on this event. He was awesome last week. His sectionals were sensational. Coming from last, a wide draw. All of a sudden, he's into barrier two. Yeah, he's one of my best bets on the night. I know there's a lot of good horses. Yeah, and once again, you just start going through them. Air Express, Ironclad, uh, Royal Cruiser, Rocky, a fantastic semi-final winner here for the connections there. I think Peter Trevor Jones is away, actually. He's left the horse with Joey Rando this week. So Peter and, and Mrs. Trevor Jones, wherever you are, hopefully it's a good holiday present. Um, but yeah, you just got Glitter Ain't Gold. What a fantastic run for its second. A lot of chances in this race, but I really, really like War Dam Buddy. The four-year-old boys division of the Breeders' Challenge for the Entires and Geldings. It's a Group 3 event set to get underway at 8.47. And, well, Captain's Knock, we saw him go 1.49 last week. He's come up with a plum draw here in Barrier 2 with Oliver Dan and also Captain Hemmerhead. They've drawn out wide there in Barrier 11 and 12, which makes their task at hand very, very hard to try and overcome Captain Snock. And I suppose this alludes to the fact, I always say there's no... Bad barriers at Menangle, there's only better odds, but this is 
uh, point in interest is that Captain's not because he's got the good barrier. He's at about a dollar thirty, a dollar forty, and Oliver Dan and Captain Hammerhead are going to be out of nine and ten. Yeah, they're a little bit better in the odds. They're very two very very good horses. Oliver Dan was super impressive. I think Captain Hammerhead needed the run last week. I think you'll find he's a bit better this week, but really hard to go past the knock. I know there'll be a lot of connections here. Um, yeah, he's in good form. Won his last two. Hard to go past. Hard to go past the captain. Race six is the 24-hour fight against cancer. Tony and Jill McGrath, trotters free for all. And Wano, I know you love the trotters and there's one in particular here that you pinpointed quite a few weeks ago when he come up to race here at Club and Angle and that's out of Baron Zeus for Brent Lilly and Bailey Madonna and he looks a standout in this field. Yeah, look, since that race, he raced in the Bill Collins Mile against a superstar, just believe in all the fantastic horses down there in Victoria, and he was by no means disappointed in that. I know it's got a six, but he had no luck, sat back in the field, no clear run. He's come up here, as I've said, all the horses off the front. He's got good gate speed. Really interesting, the two and three, Funky Monkey and Toro Stride, they can pack their rebox. They can fly off that gate. So it'll be a little bit of an interesting battle because I think they'd like to hand up to Outer Baron Zeus. So Funky Monkey and Toro Stride could hold a little bit of a key here if they get into it a little bit early. But yeah, it's really hard to go past the seven Outer Baron Zeus. Race seven is the bestinbeds.com.au Battle of Bathsheba free for all. And I think there's one horse that everyone will be wanting to see on the card and he lines up here. It's number eight, Leap to Fame. He's this year's Miracle Mile champion. The last time he was here at Menangle, that's the race he took out. And, well, Larry, I think he's a crowd favourite. Yeah, I just think people want, might come along and just to have a look at him. You know, we're talking about one of the world's greatest standard breads and we've got him here for a $25,000 race. Amazing to think that we've got him here. I know they're really happy with him over there at um, Lucky Lodge, the way he settled in. Uh, really good support um, card with this race. You know, Max Delight, like, he won. He run a world record here as a three year old. He's now eight, and he's performing as good as ever. Um, you got Narano, who's been performing well. Major Moth was fifth in that Victoria Cup. Don Lu was impressive here last week. So, yeah, a nice support card, but leap to fame. Yeah, just people go and have a dollar on him. Keep the ticket. Don't cash it in. Maybe one day you can give it to your kids and say, "I've seen that horse <laughs> go around," and and I backed him. Race seven, we come back to a Group 1 event here and it's the New South Wales Breeders' Challenge two-year-old Phillies final and going to reload. She's won five from six starts. She was so dominant in her semi-final and the horse that got close to her in that semi was our dance monkey and the draw hasn't been kind to her. She's out there in 12. Yeah, Amanda seems to appear pretty wide in a few of these barrier draws, but yeah, going to reload. I know all the connections are here. There's a fantastic crew, Stewie and the whole family show up. Uh, all his family and friends, so yeah, be a lot of interest around that one, going to relate. Look, Golden Shoes is an emergency. If it starts, uh, which it's entitled to at the moment, I think it was a little bit disappointing last week because it had really good form and I know that it was in the market. Wouldn't surprise us. Sugar Pie Honey, uh, Ricky and Ashley are forming a great combination there. Another one, our special memory. Um, Dennis Howe was here last week. He owns this mare. The brood mare, this is its only foal. I think I could be wrong, but I think she passed away when she had the foal or just afterwards. Um, so this is that's why she's got that our special memory. So, yeah, fingers crossed that uh, she performs admirably. Really hard to go past number four, though. Gonna reload. And just before we go past the Rickson camp there, I have to give a special mention to Hannah Rickson who brought up her 100th career driving victory at Bathurst last night aboard Keelor Baby Shark for her mum and dad. So a uh, celebration, a milestone to celebrate really? there. That's and great. Hopefully they'll be celebrating some more on Saturday Only night. Only seems like yesterday I had her working in the stables here on a race day <laughs> when she used to work here on a Saturday night and then she's driven 100 winners. Fantastic effort, Hannah. And yeah, just a great family and she's a great girl. We roll on to race nine and that's the Breeders' Challenge final for the three-year-old fillies. Another group one event here and we're going to be talking about the Rickson camp again because elusive. She was very dominant in her semi-final win and barrier one. Yeah, look, very dominant, Peter Rickson. Oh, Peter will probably be asleep by 10.45, <laughs> um, so it'll be Will and Hannah looking after him probably. Um, he's, getting, he's getting a bit long on the teeth, he'll love me saying that. But yeah, no, I think it's a match race, one and three. Renewal um, has raced really good in Group 1 races here before. I think she comes second in the final last year. Um, elusive, as I said, strong. I think it's a match race, one and three. Um, yeah, maybe Golly G Fellas. 
uh, could cause a, a little bit of an upset there. I know it's drawn wide. You've got Soap Opera, who's won a $100,000 race here recently. But yeah, really hard to go past the one and three. Be interesting to see who actually starts favourite in this race. I do like the one and three, but Soap Opera, I know she ran third last week, but she really caught my eye the way she hit the line. And she's drawn out wider, so she's not on the fence, drawn barrier one like she was last week, and I think she'll take benefit from oh, that as and well. And she's a big race winner here, so that's a massive benefit. The final race to round out our cracking 10 race card is the four-year-old Mayor's final of the Breeders' Challenger Group 3 event and another race where I think there's one standout in the field here and that's number nine, I Keep Smiling. We caught up with Jackie Gibson just towards the end of last week and spoke about her journey with this mare and no doubt Jackie will be cheering her home here in this $50,000 final. Yeah, she's probably very happy with the racing manager making this race 10, 10 past 11, <laughs> but I'm pretty sure she'll stay away for a $50,000 race. She'll be here on the night. Yeah, really hard to beat. <laughs> Peter Rickson, Will Rickson, they're in this one too. He is really liking me. Eight, nine and ten he's in. But um, Ludacris was really good. Changing the barrier draw, so... Last start, I Keep Smiling was on the inside of Ludacris. I know it ended up that I Keep Smiling sat outsider, but Ludacris might get there a little bit easier. Um, yeah. No Dramas is going really nice. Vanette won the other night. Promised Land will go good, but they've all raced against these two horses and they haven't been able to finish in front of them. But I Keep Smiling, we know how tough she is, but Ludacris will get there a little bit easier. I think she might make it interesting. But hard to go past I Keep Smiling. Well, Wano, we've gone through our race-by-race race preview, so let's get stuck into our best bets for Saturday night. Wano, who's your best bet on the card? Well, it starts with a W. War Dan Buddy. He was super here last week. That was a really, really impressive semi-final win. Drawn better this week. Um, it's got the service of Cameron Hart. You just know Emma, uh, the Stewart horses, they turn up ready to race in these Group 1 races. Really good field, but he was super impressive and yeah, hard to go past his best bet, War Dan Buddy. My best bet on the card comes up in the four-year-old Entires and Geldings final here. And I'm going to stick loyal with who I went with last week, and that's Captain's Knock. I think we are talking about our best bet on the card. He's got the barrier draw there. I think Brad will be able to dictate terms out there in front and this horse, he's aiming for the crown, three a clean sweep in the series, three years in a row, and I'll be cheering him home, hoping that he can get it done. Well, if he gets it done, we might call a race after him, eh? Hey? Like, Frith won all three. We named a race after her, so I think he'll deserve it. If he can win the three of them, I think he deserves a race name. Captain's not yeah, he's a nice horse. Absolutely. Well, Wano, a bet called Wano's Way, where you multi up or find a trifecta or Quinella that really takes your I fancy. I got a Quinella last week. Did you? In the one O's way. I'm sure Very I did. Good. It was War Damn Buddy and uh, Air Express. There you go. There you go. Very I paid good. $9. So, yeah, pretty happy with that one. As we like to say, the more you put on, the more you get back. So, Wano, what are you going with, with Wano's way this week? Uh, we're going to go four horse all up. Mm -hmm. So, we're going to go four winners. <laughs> Easy. So, of course, best bet, War Damn Buddy. We're going to throw that into then Elder Baron Zeus. We're going to let it ride into Leap to Fame. He might be a dollar twenty, but... Couple of winners either side of him, it'll multiply that. So you might actually end up getting something back if Leap to Fame wins, as long as I keep smiling wins the last race. So yeah, all up are four winners. War damn buddy, out of Baron Zeus, Leap to Fame, and I keep smiling. There you go. Well, hopefully punters will be smiling after the that last race. all up scores. Well, as we mentioned, a massive 10 race card coming up on Saturday night. There are limited seats still available in the Miracle Mile restaurant. So if anyone is wanting to come and elevate their race night experience, we recommend jumping on to the Club Menangle website or giving us a call so that we're able to book those seats. In a lot of you. connections in there this week, so it'll be a great atmosphere to be in the Miracle Mile restaurant. It definitely will be. Plenty of cheers, no doubt, as the field comes up the home straight. Well, no, it's been great to catch up with you. That's our first Menangle Angle done. How have you enjoyed it? Yeah, it's good. Can I get a bit of ACDC or something <laughs> in these? Maybe if you start singing it, you'll oh, be able to oh, do some ACDC. Maybe not just yet. I'm not that confident. <laughs> well, it's been great catching up with you, Wano. Thank you so much for joining us on the Menangle Angle. And we'll catch you next Thursday where we'll again preview our upcoming Saturday night race card. Thanks for joining us.